looking at the dark side, I I felt worried. I was like, I got. Hey, Royal family. God bless you. Welcome back to the channel. Glory to God. I just had a dream the other day. Today is Monday. And I had a dream on Sunday yesterday. For God's glory and honor. I dreamed that I was basically, I don't want to say dead because, you know, I was physically dead, but I wasn't spiritually that I was still alive. So it was about me going to the beach. I parked my car and I was going to meet my family, my mom's family. And as I was heading to the beach, I was led up to this lighthouse. And the lighthouse had two sections. One section was, you know, for God's people on their way to heaven. And the other section was for the people who are wicked, who are on their way to hell. And I was in a chasm. If you look up the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16, 26, it says, And besides all this between us and you is a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from there, from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So I was in a chasm where I was on a roller coaster ride and it's called a train. I didn't start pictures. It's called a train and on that train was God's people. God's Radiant Church. And it was not a lot of people on that train. It was very few. And so the angels were instructing us, you know, sit down, you know. They was just ordering us to sit down, have our seats. And so in the chasm, I saw that other side, uh, another train. But it was for people who was on their way to hell. It was darkness on that side and when I looked at the people you know church people and people of the world they kind of dress the same but that's not what this um, dream was about it's not about how people dress it's about how people act and if they keep on living in sin they're on their way to hell because of their decisions that they make God doesn't send them unto hell you choose to go there because you prefer your sin over God. But if you want to stop living in willful sin, he can help you with it. So as I looked, I was in the chasm. I seen like a hole. And I saw those other people, you know, who lived in wickedness. It was so dark on that side, but I still saw the people. And they was getting ready to sit down for the joy of their life. And I don't mean to say joy of their life, but like the ride of their life. Because once you die, that's when life begins. So I seen the people getting ready to sit down for, they ride, for the ride of their life. I seen a woman with a hookah pen in her hand. And I seen many worldly people there. If you have... The spirit of discernment, as the people of God, we should have this. You can know who's from the world and who's of God. Because God's people are radiant. Just by looking at them, you can tell they have radiance on their face. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So as I've seen people, you know, they hold on to their sin and their addictions. And it becomes an idol, basically. They want to indulge in their sin every single day, but then they don't know when it's going to be the last day they're going to have on earth. So as I was looking at the dark side, I 
I felt worried. I was like, I got off. I got off the train. I got off the ride from my seat. I looked at them and I went to the window of the lighthouse and I looked down on the beach and my family was there. I couldn't even get out of there. And I was telling the angel, I got to go to my car. I think I parked it in the wrong spot. I think I have to pay the meter. And he was telling me no. He said no. So this life here on earth is not forever. It's just like this dream just showed me how quick life is. One minute you're here, the next minute you're not. And we're God's temple. We have to take care of ourselves. Not indulging of this, in the stuff of the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as I was also on my seat before I had got up to, you know, look out the window for my family, I, I was sitting next to somebody who was um, lukewarm because the angels, they made sure everybody who was on board was, you know, on board and was righteous and was part of God's radiant church. So the person who was sitting next to me was lukewarm. And as I was, we were sitting there for quite a while, waiting, you know, I guess, for the angels to have everything organized. This guy, he was just sleeping. He started falling asleep, and I'm just staring at him. I'm like, why is he sleeping? And then he was so asleep that he looked like as if he was dead. He looked like a dead body. And God is against the lukewarm. The angels came and took him out of the seat right away, and they sent him over to the dark side. And this is just to warn you, guys, hell was real. Hell was not a place that you don't want to go. It's for eternity. And this is just to warn you and your family and your friends that hell was real. Our life is but just a vapor. It's just a vapor. We're just flesh and bones. When you leave this earth, you won't take your sexuality with you. You won't take your hookah with you. You won't take your cigarettes with you, your smoke, your liquor with you. It'll just be you alone in out of darkness. And lukewarmness is not of God. God said if you live in lukewarm, he's going to spit you out his mouth. Because you're neither hot nor cold. We have to be hot for God, on fire for God. But since you're lukewarm, you want to go to church on Sunday and party with the world during the week and forget about God during the week and then come back on Sunday and go to church. You're going to be spit out. And if you die in your sin and you don't repent, you will end up in hell. That's just the reality there. Hell is a separation from God where you go to pay for your own sins because he already paid it on the cross but you chose your sin over God the Bible is God's word it's his word it's true glory to God and I'm gonna give you scripture and I'm gonna give you pictures so you can put everything together because everything is spiritual everything even if we're living here on this earth everything is spiritual what is seen is temporary what is not seen is eternal jesus said blessed are those who have not seen yet believe glory to god so i gave you the scripture for the rich man and lazarus he was in torment in hell do not be like the world do not do not be like the world one john Chapter 2, verse 15 to 17 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, come not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Glory to God. Do not love the world. Do not be of the world. 2 
Corinthians 6, 14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteous and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Proverbs fourteen twelve says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. So you may think you live in the right way, but at the end, it's going to lead to death, physical death and spiritual je- spiritual death. And just like that lukewarm guy who I was sitting next to on the roller coaster train, he was spiritually dead. He was living in both worlds, you know, in a double life. And it only ended up in death. So please do not be like the world. Do not be part of it. Do not be lukewarm. God is warning people. He's warning you with his love, with his kindness. That hell was real. And that he wants you to spend eternity with him. God is light. So the lighthouse represented God. Because he is light. Darkness and light cannot indulge together. One John chapter 1 verse 5 says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. Only the blood of Jesus can purify your sin. But this is willful sin. He can help you out with your willful sin. And God is the light. He's the light of the world. He's the light of our life. The Bible says that there are people who will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual moral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible is very clear who will not inherit the kingdom of God. Heaven is God's house. He has rules for his house. That's why he gave us his Ten Commandments. Anybody you meet has rules in their house. I have a rule in my house. Don't wear shoes in my house because the floor gets dirty. Everyone has a rule for their house. And you can't say, oh, I was a good person. I'm a good person. So I I deserve heaven. No, you don't deserve heaven. Nobody's good but God. Jesus alone said it. No one is good but God. Everyone has sinned. And falling short. That's why you need to repent. And give your life to Jesus. And have a relationship with him. This is not about religion. This is about relationship. He wants a relationship with you. He is your father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about God's people. God's radiant people. God's church. Ephesians 5.27 says. And to present her to himself. As a radiant church. Without stain or wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Glory to God. And the amazing thing about that dream is that I had my radiant shirt on, says Radiant Church, the best is yet to come. And I wore that in other videos you can see. But that's the shirt that I was wearing in my dream. And glory to God, my son was sitting next to me in my dream. He was with me along the road. My oldest son, who's 13, he was with me in my car, going to the beach, trying to meet my family at the beach, and then entering the lighthouse, you know, as I was trying to look out the window to rescue my family, my son still sit, seated in the chair in his seat. You know, glory to God, he 
He's on his way to heaven, and I know this because God showed me, and I thank God for that. So please warn your family and friends, hell is real. And if you are on social media, preach the gospel. Social media is not for you to look fancy and to flash. Social media is for you to preach the gospel and to show examples to the world, to others, that you're a child of God. You don't want to be in front of God on judgment day. And he said, where are your talents? You don't want to be like that servant who didn't have no talent. When he hid his talents, you don't want to be that person. You have talents. God gave you talents. If you don't know your talents, ask the Holy Spirit. Some people have a talent for taking care of children or, you know, caring for the elderly or caring for the poor, serving food to the poor and the elderly. Some people have you know, talents of singing, of dancing, but of, you know, doing YouTube videos, preaching the gospel, teaching. Everybody has a talent, and we all do everything for God, for God's glory, for God to be glorified, so people can say, wow, look at this person. They have talents. They're doing it all for God. They have beautiful writing skills. They write music beautifully. They write Christian rap beautifully beautiful melodies for God. Do not hide your talent. Do not be like the world. You don't want to be like that servant. I'm telling you, don't hide your talent. Show the world you want social media. When you post a picture of yourself, put a Bible scripture. And I hope it's modest for God's glory. Because people post immodest pictures with scripture. And that's very horrifying. Horrifies my eyes and I, I'm pretty sure it horrifies God. Please have discernment. When you post on social media, you have friends and family on there. You don't know when's going to be their last day here on earth. Warn them. Give them the word. Give them the word with love. Warn them about hell. Warn them that they can be taken out of the fire. And the book of Job says, Snatching them out of the fire. Snatch your friends and family out of the fire. And even if they don't repent at that moment, you still keep preaching your word on, on social media. Keep on. Keep on. And, and that seed will be planted and God will be glorified in their life. God will move in their life. All you have to do is keep on planting them seeds. Keep on planting and planting and planting. Don't give up. Don't stop. Because you don't know when somebody's going to have the angel of death come visit them. And they're not right with God. And people say, oh, you don't know what was the last words that they said. And that only happens to people who are on their deathbed, who have an opportunity to say their last words to God to repent. But people who die in their sleep and they wake up the next day, wanting to sin and indulge in their flesh, they're not saying their prayers at night. They're not saying their prayers at night because that's not repenting. That's not true repentance. That's not doing the 180. You want to repent, you do the 180. You pray to God daily. Forgive me my sins. Help me not to do this. Help me not to do that. Because I'm your temple. I want to live for you. I want to glorify you, God. I don't want to glorify myself. Jesus said, pick up your cross and deny yourself. Die to yourself daily. Deny yourself. I don't want to indulge in my sin no more. I don't want to live in willful sin no more. Whereas we are sinful by nature, but willful sin is not for us. That's not what we're we were made for. We were made to glorify God and to worship God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I pray that you pray for your family daily, your friends daily, and work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Spiritual works. Not earthly works. Spiritual works. Glory to God. Share this video with as much people as you can. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I love you.
We are going to your Father's King. God bless you.